All right, let's get into episode three, season two analysis recap. With the extra knowledge from Manny News, let's see if we can try to theory craft and understand it better. So what's going on? We are in this realm of not spirits. No, these were souls. Echidna soul, Subaru soul. Echidna's graveyard within the sanctuary because this is where she met her end 400 years ago, presumably by Satala, right? So we're in this different realm, Windows XP domain. And she says, my name is Echidna, the Witch of Greed. Crazy revelation that different witches exist. But hey, we already knew that. But apparently, Subaru didn't know that these witches other than Satala existed. Even if Betty told him in Season 1 and Arc 2, he was not paying attention. I'm still a fragile young lady, you know. Young my ass, bitch, you've existed for over 400 years. Even before then you were here, right? Maybe the body looks like a young lady, but like, how old is she really? Who knows, man? There's no way I'm gonna be on edge exactly when it's Witch of Greed. Of course I'd be on my edge, dude, right? She doesn't really tell us about where this is, but this is some sort of soul dimension. I wonder if this is a power specific to Echidna. I wonder if it's due to some property of the Sanctuary, because apparently Echidna is bound here, right? Not only did she die 400 years ago, and this is her graveyard, which is graveyard, but like she, her soul is apparently also bound here. She cannot leave. She doesn't know anything outside in the world that's happened for these 400 years. This is the witch's tea party. We show up. And this is another example where it's Natsuki Subaru, just out of impulse, will do something. Sometimes they're stupid. Sometimes it helps us. But drinking the tea right now, it helped him, you know, consume a kid in his body fluid, which helps him, like, activate his sloth witch factor and increase his resistance. So, it's like, another example of this is, like, literally two episodes ago, when he took the crystal off of Amelia, right? Impulse action, it worked out. Another example of that could be when he fucking... There's a lot of mistakes too he does, right? Like when he missed, when he like made an embarrassment of himself in front of all the white knights by being the main white knight during the royal selection arc. But writing in the gospel with this blood is another act of impulse. And I am never gonna let that go. That's ha that has to be significant. So he drinks Echidna's tea. You're awfully brave. This is gonna actually help us out later. And, you know, overcome the trial most maybe, or at least be help to overcome the trial, have some time qualifications. She says, to put it bluntly, it's a body fluid of mine. So what do you mean body fluid? What kind of body fluid do you think she put in here? Her sweat? Her saliva? Snot. Tears. Coochie juice. Anal leakage. I don't know, but she put something in the tea, to put it bluntly, and we just drank that up. And apparently, Subaru, in the source material, was on the ground trying to puke it up, but he couldn't. And then he says, like, oh, if I was actually prepared for it in advance, I'd be fine with it. I'm sure he'd be fine if it was Amelia's piss that he's drinking, bro. He drank that shit for fucking free. I'll have you know that my eyes are blessed throughout the day by the prettiest girl alive, Amelia. It's funny, too, at the end of the episode, how we return to his room because of the trial of him having to overcome his past. And it's just all silver-haired waifus. You would think that because of that, he would fall for Echidna, but, like... Don't you think that she's really pretty? I, I feel like she is super pretty, but I'm not too sure. Maybe it's blood, so he's now half-blooded. Mm -hmm. So you're now saying that because the qualifications to take the trial has to do with people with half-blood, right? You think that maybe Echidna's body fluids has now caused them to be half-witch, half-human? Eh, I could entertain that thought, but I don't think so. Maybe. Echidna is so beautiful, but... I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Subaru is like too... He's got his ass up. He's got his head up. Amelia's ass too high to even recognize like Echidna. I think Echidna is more beautiful than Amelia. I ain't gonna lie. You came here of your own accord is what Echidna says. You, if you want to go back, you can. I thought that Echidna like summoned him because she said, so this is the root of your desires. Connections to Amelia. I thought that Echidna thought there was something interesting with Amelia and Subaru because maybe she does know who Amelia is. And then, we have to think about this. How the fuck would Echidna know who Amelia is? If we're gonna assume that the this is the root of your desires and that implies that she knows who Amelia is, 
Well, she doesn't know anyone here for 400 years, ever since, you know, she died. So then, can we then assume that Amelia existed 400 years ago? And she froze herself? And then 400 years later, Puck found her and then, un, un, like, uh, took her out? Right? Because her soul is bound here. Maybe Amelia visited here a while ago, when Subaru wasn't even here, in a sanctuary. I don't know, but very interesting, Echidna and Amelia. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Our existence is the only true requirements for us to share a dialogue. She's greedy for the knowledge, right? And boom, we get sent into this like space-like dimension. Now, there's a lot of interesting dialogue here. Like a one-liner for each single witch. Daphne is very interesting because apparently Daphne is the one who created beasts that defy the will of God to save the world from starvation, right? Daphne created beast, Wits of Gluttony. Gluttony is something the White Willow's called before. And I'm gonna also assume the Black Serpent is another one of those beasts because of the naming scheme, as well as people glazing the Black Serpent to be in the White Whale's tier, right? But who is God? The will of God. Every time Echidna talked about these witches and their feats, it sounded like the witches are trying to save the world, right? It sounds like they're actually trying to help. So, like, how do we save the world from starvation? I don't know. By eating whale blubber? <laughs> like, are you sure the white whale is really saving the world from starvation? Or the black serpent? Maybe there's other beasts that I'm not aware of yet. But it sounds like, like, they did try. And will of God. God. So you're saying the will of God wanted the world to die from starvation? Why? Is this some, like, uh... Noah's Ark shit, where God realized how much monkeys his own creations are and decided to do a server wipe. So like, God back then was like, yo, fuck these people. And the witch was like, uh-oh, Daphne created these beasts. And, and, and then instead of people starving, they had food? I, I don't know. Very interesting dialogue. But that's Daphne's silhouette, I think. It looks like she's young. Maybe twin tails. Next up. Witch of Lust Carmilla. Now, the Witch of Lust Carmilla, this is more evidence that my theory of Teresia taking back shots from demi humans during the war, it, it's coming more and more true. So, here, let me explain. Who granted emotions to non human beings in an attempt to fill the world with love. So, it sounds like uh, there was a population crisis, and the Witch of Lust Carmilla gave these uh, demi-humans, these beast humans, these non-humans, you know, the ability to fucking, you know, <laughs> be tempt desires. And humans start to fuck other things and they become, you know, half, you know, demi-humans and shit. That, that's what I'm assuming, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks to the Witch of Lust, my theory of <laughs> the, the Archbishop of Gluttony being the fucking, some sort of offspring, maybe not directly son, grandson, great-grandson of, uh, uh, fucking, uh, uh, Teresia Van Austria? I don't know, man. This is, this is, I don't know, bro. Just, just more evidence that <laughs> is uh, supporting my schizo theory. A 0.000001% chance of it coming true. That of which wrath Minerva. So Minerva's an interesting case because apparently she's from a different world who hunt in hopes of healing, who hurt in hopes of healing as she lamented the state of her war-torn world. As in like, why would she, why would, why would Echidna say her world, right? Sounds like she has a, she's from a fucking different planet, bro. Like a different planet is war-torn and she is hurt by it and she's trying to heal them. But the Witch of Wrath would do that? When I think Wrath, I think of people that's fucking angry and upset, right? Who hurts in hopes of healing. Maybe she's super upset because of the war-torn world and she's trying to get some sort of justice for her war-torn world. I'm, I'm not sure. Next witch. There's Minerva right there. Uh, the next one is... Come on, subtitles. Come on. Yes. Here it is. That of the Witch of Sloth segment. Segment is directly associated with the great dragon past the great waterfall, right? We know of this dragon lore from season one. 
I think Ram was talking about it one, through one of her, you know, like the uh, old storybooks that Subaru was reading when he was trying to learn the language in this place. And there was the mention of a dragon that exists beyond the Great Waterfall that's still looking over the Great Kingdom of Lugunica. So Great Waterfall mentioned, Sekhmet drove it just for a chance to rest. Who's resting? I don't know, right? It says that Sekhmet drove the dragon past this. Sekhmet kicked the dragon out. But who's resting here? Is the dragon resting? Is Sekhmet resting? Is the rest of the world resting thanks to the dragon being gone? Again, these one-liners are very kind of vague, and there's a lot of different interpretations you could have with it. The next one is the Witch of Pride, Typhon or Typhon. And her thing is, who out of youthful innocence and cruelty judged criminals one after another. So it sounds like the Witch of uh, Pride is a young girl who is super egotistical, maybe like Petra, right? And judges criminals in biased ways that just goes with whatever arrogance decides it to be. So she's like the worst judge ever? I don't know. And then, Satala at the end, right? Witch of- sorry, here's the Witch of Greed, Echidna, that's her. The embodiment of the thirst for knowledge, she's very thirsty for knowledge. Who has done things she regrets. What have you done, Echidna, that you regret? Even in the realm of death, all in pursuit of all types of knowledge. Are we in the realm of death right now? I don't know, but she made these decisions that she regrets just for knowledge. Or perhaps the Witch of Envy, Satala, right? 400 years ago, everything points 400 years ago. Biku is 400 years old. The White Whale was created 400 years ago. 400 years ago is when uh, uh, Echidna died, right? This is, the grave, this is the graveyard of the witches. Sorry, a graveyard of Echidna. So before that, that was like the witches, the witches era, I think. And Satala, for whatever reason, killed all the other witches and consumed and used them as sustenance while she made the whole world her enemy. So when you say sustenance, I'm thinking like she was hungry, like she didn't have food and she decided to fucking cannibalize other witches. But that's like a very base level of thinking when you think of the term sustenance. Sustenance could be just like a arbitrary word to define the lack of something, right? Satala seems to be deprived of love. She's envious, right? What does she use? But like she consumed them for sustenance? I don't know what that really means. Like she apparently consumed them all, but I doubt it's out of hunger. The term sustenance here, I don't know. Maybe mana? Maybe she needed all the wishes to gather power to become a strong enemy of the world? But why does she make the whole world her enemy? Indirectly. What was Satala's goals from the beginning? Why would she do this? I have no clue. Other than her just wanting attention? other Because like, apparently, in the cut content, it was told that there is this southern kingdom, southern continent of Vela Cruz or some shit, and another witch, this is Media, was discovered. And her name was getting popular, but the witch's cult decided to send the archbishop there to destroy it because it's heresy to mention other witches just to show how envious Satala is and how she is the only real witch, everyone is fake. You see how everything about her is so self-centered and she's so envious. So why would she have done this? What is her goal at the end of the day? Is there a goal at the end of the day? Maybe she was forced to this decision out of love? Maybe this is the only way to save someone she loved? To bring half the world in flames? Maybe the world killed her one love. Maybe the world killed the one thing that she loved. So she's, and, and the other witches are kind of part of it and they didn't help her. So she decided to consume all the other witches and make the world her enemy? Hmm. Just trying to think about like motives of why she would do that rather than just like a random thing. I don't think the explanation of her just being bored is good enough. It's, it's, it's a very lazy answer, right? She was just bored so she fucked up the world? A show like ReZero with so much deep understanding and easter eggs, I doubt that's the case, but I don't know, man. What the fuck was she after? The most detestable of them all, right? Satala, here it is. 
Such is the nature of a witch. It's quite bothersome. Drinks her own body fluid. Subaru just got his slot witch factor activated. It says stimulated, but now he can use the authority of sloth. But it's not going to be necessarily unseen hand because the way that a witch factor manifests is dependent on the person's desires and personality traits. So we won't see Unseen Hand when Subaru actually uses his authority of Sloth. But let's see what it's going to be. Yep, strengthens your resistance. And now we are qualified to take the trial, I think. Let's see. I find your existence very special, right? Let's see. Yeah. Come on. Subs, come on. Quite desirable. There was a specific uh, thing Aninya said about how Echidna sees Subaru as an exceptional special being. And this is where things get crazy. Things get crazy because she has no knowledge of Archbishops. Because Archbishops and the cult was created after 400 years ago. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 400 years ago is when she died. The era of witches ended. It's just Satala. And the witch's cult is only for Satala. She has no understanding of what, like, the archbishops are. She doesn't know who Regulus is, so there's no connection there. But for some reason, she knows about Subaru. She knows about Subaru, and she knows... Um, she, she knows what level or how much growth Subaru should have at this current point. Which is insane. She says, like... You're ahead of schedule, like you, right now, you're ahead of schedule where you should be at this point. Implying, Echidna knows about different timelines? How much does she know about her regression power? Is she kind of like Orsted in Mushoku Tensei? Or Orsted seemingly has an understanding of what, how each character should have developed at this point? Pointing out that Eris is stronger than she should be? And Super right now has developed more than she should have right now? I don't know why, but I think that the connections here just has to do with Subaru simply connection with the witch, Satala. That's why Echidna knows knowledge of him, despite other people. Like, like again, she knows nothing of the outside world because she's bound here. Sure, sometimes guests can appear, but she has no clue about the cult and shit like that, I think. In these past days, you killed the one who possessed the sloth witch factor, correct? That could be just a guess because she can sense the sloth witch factor in Subaru, but again, more events of the outside world. That's why you're also able to enter this graveyard unharmed. This graveyard. This is not the same as... Well, the graveyard, the witch's graveyard is the same thing as a sanctuary. There is this, you know... Like... A half-blood can pass through the barrier not easily. Your soul be deflected, right? A half-blood would also have the qualifications to take the trial. Roswell will get shredded up because he is not a half... Uh, a half-blood, yet he will still enter the sanctuary, but he cannot do the trial, so the wording of the graveyard is kind of confusing here. This is the witch's graveyard, where my soul is held prisoner. Intentional wording. Prisoner. I don't know why... But she is held here due to some sort of contract, some sort of vow, oath, I don't know. You know where the sanctuary is? This is all kind of the sanctuary, right? Well, while this may be like a soul realm, it's still within, like, we entered by going into the ruins where Satala's, sorry, Echidna's soul is, like, as bound to. So everything right now is the sanctuary. More scenes of Echidna's scariness. Like, the immersion breaks when you have this witch that's supposed to be scary and ominous suddenly show a slice of life moments and get rizzed up like that, but it is what it is. Yep, this is all the sanctuary. And then, when we could have asked Echidna more about questions, we just leave. And this helps us, I guess, rizz up Echidna in a way because she's so starved for conversations and company. But it fucking makes me so frustrated because he should have asked her so much more questions. And while she may not know events of, you know, like how to save Rem because she has no idea of the Archbishop of Gluttony and stuff like that or the cult, we could still ask her about all the events that happened prior to you guys dying during the Witch's Era, which would have been so fucking amazing, man. <laughs> I'd rather meet up with Amelia outside and talk to you. Super is at least being loyal. 
poor Echidna. And remember, maybe there is a connection with Echidna and Amelia. And maybe right now, Echidna is getting cucked by Amelia because Subaru said, I'd, I'd rather go talk to Amelia. Powerful people from around the world have come to me in search of my knowledge, but Subaru, you don't understand. He, he, he built different. He'll just fucking leave. And it's kind of working. It's like uh, playing hard to get, you know? The more that you try to simp for a girl on White Knight, the more they realize how pathetic you are and how easy you are, right? That's kind of the way with Super and Amelia right now of how it just... He's always simping hard, and maybe it's working, but like... See here? He just walks away, just treats her like shit, kind of. <laughs> Acts disinterested, goes away. And yes, there's a whole component of her being starved for knowledge and being greedy for conversations, but I think that this is somehow working, man. Poor Echidna. You'd ask a dead woman a witch at that. Yes. What does Subaru say here? Not interested. Come on, play the subs, bro. I'll make time to chat over tea with you later. So, I think that there is potential to get back with Echidna, right? So we can still meet back here. I mean, we can just straight up meet her again, but like, goddamn, man. That's an unfortunate event. Like, we could have so much knowledge, but meta-wise, is it better for the audience to get all the answers to the plot? Fuck no, right? It's not gonna, it's, it's gonna ruin the storytelling. So, it is what it is. This part is very interesting because while the anime says it's a vow, the subtitle here says a vow. Apparently, this is what this is more closer to a pact. And the pact is, or if it's a vow, I'm not sure. It's about you cannot know anything that transpired at this tea party. So we know that when he leaves here, he loses the memories. I thought that like it would be a promise of like you know you shouldn't tell other people about this, but rather than doing that, she just erases his memory, which is just easier. But if we go beyond that. What happened with the um, indie cut content? Apparently, Echidna, when making this pact, told Subaru. I'm not sure if she told Subaru, but like he already has another pact, right? While this pact was about to be made, Echidna made the comment of like, you already have another pact before, and what is that? Most likely, Satala and the return by death promise of not telling other people. And notice how... Echidna made Subaru forget this event of the pact even happening. What about Satala too? If we're gonna assume that's the same shit, does that mean that Subaru has met with Satala in the past? Somehow, some way, I don't know how, but forgot the memories of making a pact, right? Because that's the connection right now. We're, we're connecting the memory loss and the pacts, and that could explain how we have these powers and Satala loves us, yet we seem to know nothing about her, and that could be the memory loss part. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I will grant you the right to the trial of the sanctuary. The trial of the sanctuary. So, this is the qualifications, right? So the qualification is different than the witch factor being stimulated and the resistance. Because like it sounds like she just gave Subaru what's necessary for him not to get fucked up like Roswell did. But we did get the qualifications, and now we can go in. And Echidna says, whether you not, you know, you will realize it's worth, I wonder how you'll feel about that. We should be probably happy and thankful because Roswell got all messed up. The mere thought gives me such beautiful expectations, and then she licks her hands. <laughs> what the fuck was this, bro? <laughs> Is this showing her greed? For knowledge? She wants to peek into Subaru's past too? What is she fucking saying here? Why is she licking her fingers like that? I don't know. Just some fan service scenes and then we leave. All right. Goodbye. And we're out. Very interesting dialogue here with the witch. But I think that one of the most important parts to be aware of is the fact that Subaru already has a pact. Most likely with Satala. And maybe that's why he lost the memories and doesn't remember who she is. And... Some of the stuff with gluttony, I guess. That's pretty much it from this section, right? A lot of important shit. And I guess like the 400 years thing. So remember, there's a the 400 year number is very special in ReZero. All right, we get out here. Garfield fucks us up. I don't know how to feel about Garfield just yet. Garfield, I think, is just 
a dumb, wild, demi-human. And am I racist for saying that? Fuck you, you know I'm right. This guy seems to have maybe a heart of gold. Because while he is super aggressive and super aggro, I think that, like, he is still nice. The way that he talks about, you know, how the village is still receiving three meals a day in, a na in an aggressive way, it's, it, it sounds like a wholesome gangster, you know? It sounds like a wholesome delinquent. He's like, Korra, I'll fuck you up right now if you don't eat your vegetables. You know? It sounds like that. Like, hey, Granny, if you don't take my hand across the street with me, I'll kill you. You know? What he's saying is hostile and aggressive, but the actions and the intent behind it, I think he's trying to help. Right? Uh, I'm Garfield. Oh, right. This part, this is like a meme part of like, how the fuck do you know about Frederica? Like, why do you think I look like Frederica? It's like, look at your teeth, bro. It's in front of you just to kind of show how slow he is. Uh, what is the important part here? Amelia gets up. Amelia immediately protects Subaru. Wow, my knight in shining armor. Yep, this is Garfield. So, the barrier, right? The barrier, like sh normal human beings, like non half bloods can cross the barrier all they want. But if they try to cross the barrier right now, like if Amelia is trying to take him out, there's a good image in Annie's video where her body can be taken out, but the soul will be forever stuck in the sanctuary until you beat the trial, right? Mixed blood is very important, right? The barrier is very, you know, very specific to mixed bloods. And now we're in the sanctuary. This place looks honestly worse than the, uh, the slums back at our place. Ram shows up, peak Ram. Ram has, you know, Garfield on a leash. Garfield seems to respect people when they get louder and a little bit more arrogant to match his vibes. And Ram is... You know, super aggro, right? She's kind of... She's kind of a bitch, right? But not the same as Priscilla, because I think Ram has more charm there. And Garfield sees that and kind of like respects it and his inner masochism, I think, accepts Ram as his master. He is too easy. We're talking about Oto right now. I really wonder... I, w I want an Oto backstory. Like, I want to know why he's so such a pushover. Right? He's such a pushover. Everyone just kind of like bosses him around. Yeah, he's a merchant. You wouldn't think that a merchant's personality would be like this. Or else he'd be fucking broke. He is too easy. Uh, and now we're talking about going into Roswell's place, right? Um, listen. Oh, this is the REM part. So we haven't told Ram about REM just yet, but I don't think now's the right time. If anything, I would have asked Ram right now to remove her bangs. I would tell her, hey, can you, can you, can you do this? Do you have two porn slots now or what? Because like that, I need to know. I need to fucking know if she has two horn po you know, potential or not. Because, you know, the whole world gets re-scripted to remove Rem. But we're not going to ask Rem that right now. We're not going to tell about Rem. I guess it doesn't make sense. Because like until we show Rem, like until we get back to the man, she, like, she won't believe it until she sees an identical copy of her. Except blue hair. And here we go. It's time to go meet Roswell. Oh, some Amelia scenes. Amelia hyping up Subaru. With the absence of Rem, Amelia is, you know, our emotional pillar of support. Amelia honestly has been a lot better than before. Maybe that's not a fair thing to say because Amelia didn't have a, ch a chance to really shine in season one. Right? But I like, I like to see like this like, quote unquote, new Amelia trying to be more involved. Trying to be like step in and help Subaru, even the speech to the villagers, right? So, potential for a lot of Amelia developments this season of her becoming more confident. We see Roswell here, and this goddamn hentai Pierrot is wrapped up in band aids. And a lot of interesting things here to talk about. Also, no makeup right now. No makeup right now. What the heck happened? What could have hurt you so badly? The trial. The alliance with Krush. Now are you satisfied with the results you got from abandoning me? Look at this lines right here, okay? Look at what Roswell says. Are you ready? Truly, truly. Come on, Suds. 
Yes, most satisfied. Truly, truly. You were the once in a lifetime windfall I had long waited for. This line, I think, is so important. Roswell specifically telling us that Subaru is a valuable asset. What is my theory? Roswell can regress with Subaru. Listen, whether or not that's not true, let's let's keep just hold on with me, okay? Because the only reason that I believe Roswell is so confident in those failed runs where Subaru fucks up but his future is secure is because he's somehow coming back with him and he uses Subaru as a lab rat to get all this shit figured out. You were the once in a lifetime windfall. He is! Subaru is hard carrying Roswell right now. It's always like, ah, I don't want to do anything. Let Subaru fucking handle it, bro. It just seems like that's what's happening, right? The whole soundtrack playing during this entire scene is so intense, man. It's like this maniacal clown song. The... It's it, it, like, it gets my anxiety up. This is called the Sanctuary. It's mostly the Witch's Graveyard. Echidna's Graveyard. It feels more like the Witch's Graveyard. Yes. What do you mean? Exactly what I said, nothing more or less. Roswell's family apparently has some sort of connection of maintaining the Witch of Greed's graveyard. I don't know why. Why does the Mather's family have such a connection there? Her final resting place? But she's also like imprisoned here. Why are you overseeing a place exactly? The land has been overseen by the heads of the Mather's family for generations. So simply them just being landlords? They just happen to be landlords? And the Witch of Greed happened to die in their land, therefore, <laughs> they take care of her. Rasa seems to have a lot of respect for Echidna as well though, right? He even says, no, not the Witch of Greed, Echidna. You have to say Echidna, right? This part, Echidna. Please, when you speak of her, do use her name. So Roswell doesn't hate Echidna. Roswell maybe simps for Echidna? And... Can we at this point, if we assume that, like, like, wonder what the relationship is between Roswell and Echidna. Is it similar to Betragus and Satala? Because, like, I know that he got fucked up because he wasn't qualified for the trial, but does not imply that Echidna hates him. But it is a funny thought to imagine how he got rejected by Echidna like this, but Subaru, his fucking loser ass, just shows up, drinks Echidna's piss, just rizzes her up and leaves. So Subaru has done something Roswell could never do. If we assume that Roswell has been cut somehow and has been deject just like rejected by Echidna, I don't know. But Subaru, his 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 neat riz, bro, it's working. The Witch of Greed makes her sound so evil. I mean, shit, that's her fucking title, bro. What do you mean to call her, bro? Mather's family Echidna have been acquainted for a long time. Maybe even 400 years ago past, yeah. To say we oversee is an exaggeration. Echidna's barrier prevents entry by outsiders who fail to follow the proper procedure. In addition, the barrier has certain effects on those whose blood meet certain conditions, right? It's the half-blood shit. Mixed blood. Did you not experience this yourself, Amelia-sama? Right? Half-elf. How did you end up in the sorry state? Because he tried the trial, right? Uh, Boom, boom. They're stuck here. We are all held... Under house arrest here in the sanctuary. Myself, Ram, and the people of Arlam. And you too as well from the moment you entered here. But like, it's not really a house arrest. It is and it isn't. You are the one that created the scenario where everyone is stuck here. And now you're forcing Amelia and Subaru to like overcome the trial. Because this is gonna somehow help his cause. The hell? You guys are flapping your gums in here? Hello, Garfield. Apparently, Ram smacked a metal tray over Garfield's head and dented it and made him submit for being rude to Roswell. Something like that. Maybe not being rude to Roswell, but at this moment in the source material, Ram from the top rope dropped him with a metal plate and smashed it over his head. Rejected by the trial. That's right. So, let's think about that. Rejected by the trial. He got these injuries. But do you think someone so smart and careful and cautious like Roswell would not know that he would get fucked up? To me, I think that he intentionally went in there fully aware that he would get injured because it would put him in a position where he is out of action yet again and forces Subaru to figure shit out because that's what he's been doing all the time. I think that's what's happening, especially with the maniacal clown like him. 
I, 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 the normal person would never do it, but this guy is fucking insane. I think he would do that. Yeah, mix blood shit with the barrier. We can get out, but Amelia can't get out. That's right, we need to go through the trial. You turn out like Roswell if you don't have the qualifications, right? If you're not a mixed blood and, or if you don't have the qualification, you're done. <laughs> this part is funny. Again, more personality of Garfield being all aggressive and hostile, but if you read what he's saying, it's actually so wholesome. Like, oh, <laughs> three meals and a nap every day. Bro, I think that's better living than most people. In fact, if you think about it, aren't they wasting a lot of resources feeding all these people? Like, this seems to be a poverty-ridden place, but they're willing to, for the sake of Roswell's plan, they're willing to just, like, like, it's not, it's not cheap to fucking keep all these people around, you know? But they're going out of their way to fucking do it, clearly, because, like, this is all part of the plan, but, like, like, holding us hostage, you, you just fucking feeding us for free, thank you, that's so nice! The only one allowed to undergo the trials to that is you, but that's a lie, you know, we also have qualification, they couldn't have gave it to us, but no one knows that. So... Who is the leader here? Like, there's these guards, making sure no one can leave. But the people of the village don't think that this is Roswell's fault. Do they blame Garfield? Are they blaming Garfield for setting up these soldiers to make sure that they all stay here? Like, who's the big bad person? That's what I don't understand. Because, like, yes, we're under house arrest, but a lot of these villagers are stuck here with armed guards. Who is responsible for that? At the, at the end of the day, probably Roswell, but, like, in their eyes, do they think, like, Garfield's the one doing this shit? Do the villagers not have any questions of why can't, they can't leave? Apparently, there's an anti-liberation force as well. Maybe it's this guy, but there are some people here that oppose Amelia and do not want to escape the sanctuary. We see the Archbishop of Pride right over here, fake el elder. We also see the Archbishop of Lust. Where's Granny at? Granny? Super Usama, yeah, yeah, yeah. Granny's here. Granny actually has a great line, man. We're gonna do it, but actually it's Amelia that's gonna do it. And Amelia does not inspire inspiration from people. And apparently she's the real village chief, bro. The granny is abusing her powers as the real village chief and groping young men's asses. And the granny actually has a serious moment asking Amelia the intense, right? If you simply want us to back you, then we can do it. But it's like, what is it, right? Do you see us as more than just votes? What are you? Amelia has a great moment. And this kind of contradicts what Anastasia said about the art of the deal. But Anastasia is a, is a cunning businesswoman. Amelia is not that person. And for Anastasia's goals, maybe that does work in terms of not using sentimental values when negotiating. But Amelia is a totally separate person. She's a kind, pure, innocent girl that has ideals and dreams about equality and freedom. And she uses this sentimental value of, I want to be your friend, you know, I want to make sure that like you guys are all good. And by being authentic and genuine, she reaches the hearts of everyone, saying families need to be together. And she grasps Puck too. She grasps the fucking necklace that Puck is in. I want to return all of you to her family. That's so sad. But other people buys this, right? They're like, you know what? This girl? I don't think she's a half devil. I think that she might be a fucking half angel, man. And I just realized. EMT. Amelia. Mega. Angel. Devils and angels, man. Everyone calls her a half-devil, but Super has been the only one calling her an angel the entire time. That's kind of funny. And Amelia kind of wins the hearts of the people. So, before, these people never trusted Amelia, but this arc is looking like it's going to give Amelia more development. She'll become more confident. She'll win the hearts of the villagers, and sh maybe she'll be at a position like uh, Krush to even give inspiring speeches and lead people. So, great arc for Amelia, maybe. Ram is kind of impressed by how Amelia has been influenced by Subaru, right? Ram does acknowledge Subaru even if she doesn't want to say it. And then here we are, right? The lesser spirits like give her, they just hype her up. So like, this scene is hilarious because apparently this is just cheerleading squad. 
I thought that these lesser spirits were doing some shit, but the lesser spirits are like, you can do it, girl boss. Yeah, you don't need no man. You are strong, Glaze. <laughs> they just hype her up, and now we go in. But as soon as she went in, <laughs> right, we have EM, uh, I think the M major challenger, EMC. <laughs> so we go in, and this thing is not supposed to uh, end up, uh, you know, it's supposed to keep glowing. But as soon as she went in, <laughs> it's gone. So, did she already fail the test? She just stepped in and immediately fucking lost, and we go in too. Another act of impulse. Guys, what do I keep saying? Subaru has these moments where he constantly does things out of his impulse, and it sometimes works out. He enters the room, and he also undergoes the trial, and it says, now, you need to first your own pa face your own past. If we think about reasons as to why Amelia could have failed the past, Sorry, the trial? Well, we know how Amelia's past is very sad, right? At least through Frozen Bond. We didn't get to see the extent of her past, but Frozen Bond alone was so depressing and sad. Some bad shit happened in the past, and everyone got frozen because Amelia went berserk, right? So, maybe that's why she can't clear it. Super goes in. We need to face our past. We hear his own voice say it, and boom! We have a bunch of silver-haired waifu figurines, and you get to see why Subaru has a bias for that. But I thought that he would care more about Echidna because she also has like white silver hair. And boom! Ohio! We have Papa Natsuki. And it seems like a very good dad, right? It seems like the family structure. Like, like I don't think the dad is like an evil person based on first glance. It sounds like he's like a exciting, outgoing father who is, you know... Caring about his son. Maybe the mom is also nice. So what is wrong with Subaru's past? Because he said that he wasted his entire life. But maybe the parents were always just kind of there and just kind of like... Because it sounds like he lived a pampered life. So even if the parents weren't evil and you know gave him trauma or anything, it's more of his own inaction, his sloth that led to him being like he wasted his life. I don't know, but we'll have to see the next episode to see exactly what Subaru is all about and why he hates himself so much. But that's it for me. I'll see you next time.